Alrighty, hello, hello everyone. I hope you all are doing amazing this evening. We are so happy for you all to be joining us here today. Thank you again for taking the time out of your evening for this opportunity to hear from some students about their experiences here at Duke. First and foremost, from all of us here and everyone at Duke right now, we really wanna congratulate everyone on their admission for the class of 2026 Duke um, Blue Devils. So if you're with friends or family, or even if you're by yourself, give yourself a personal or you know, group congratulations about this incredible accomplishment you've achieved. Um, you will get a chance to meet the other students who are gonna be on this call tonight. Um, and hopefully some of them actually look familiar. We've been doing virtual tours over these past couple of years. So if you see a familiar face, definitely be excited and know that you are finally home. And with that being said, you know, this is gonna be our early decision, Blue Devil Days, part one. Um, I'm gonna be your moderator this evening and we have two incredible admissions officers in the background. who are gonna be working on Vimeo to help highlight some questions. So at the very beginning of our time together this evening, we're gonna be talking with some students about their own experiences here, asking, their questions on this panel. And then towards the end, we'll be answering some questions that you all provide us as well. So with that being said, my name is Devin. My pronouns are he and his. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina, which is only about 30 or so minutes away from Duke. And I'm a junior this year, double majoring in biology and public policy with a certificate in science and society. And other than being a student here on campus, I'm a part of our tour guide program. I work in the Donahue lab for plant germination. So we do research on our on-campus, off-campus field and on-campus in the greenhouse. And I'm also an intern at the undergraduate admissions office as well, where I get to do things like this and meet so many cool students. So with that being said, I'm going to let our individual uh, students here introduce themselves um, and they can go ahead and take it away. Hi guys, I'm Kelly. I'm a first year from Miami and I plan on double majoring in public policy and sociology as well as getting a certificate in philosophy, politics and economics. On top of being a Blue Devil ambassador, I'm also a work study student at the Conservation Lab at Perkins Library. If you've ever watched you, it's kind of like what Joe does in the basement. I'm also a part of the Latin American Student Organ Organization and I'm also currently rushing Phi Alpha Delta, the Pre-Law Society. Hi, uh, I'm also Kelly. I'm from Orlando, Florida, and I'm the first year as well. Um, I'm planning on majoring in psychology, and um, outside of class, I am part of the um, admissions ambassadors for Duke, and I'm on my dorm's house council, um, as well as being a part of the focus program last semester, and I'm looking forward to um, maybe getting a team together for intramural basketball. Hi everyone, my name is Eleanor. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a senior class of 2022 from outside of Chicago. I'm designing my own major at the intersection of econ, data science, and sustainability through program two. Um, so when I'm not involved with tour guides and admission ambassadors, I'm involved with Business Oriented Women, which is one of our women's finance and business organizations on campus. I'm an active member of Hoof and Horn, and I'm gonna be in our upcoming musical, Into the Woods. And I work with Green Devils, which is a student sustainability organization on campus. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Haley Kirsch. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And my hometown is also right outside Chicago um, from Naperville, Illinois. So about 45 minutes away from the city. Um, my major is public policy with minors in both history and economics. And outside of tour guiding in school, I am on the executive board of Duke's chapter of NAACP. I also am a part of a voter registration tech startup, and I do work with the American End of Endometriosis Society. Alrighty, thank you all so much for your introductions. And we're gonna go ahead and begin with answering and speaking about some of the experience you all have had here at Duke today. So, for the very first question, I wanna pose it to a senior and a first year student here. So Kelly A, how would you describe campus life so far that you've experienced and the campus culture here at Duke? Yeah, so I absolutely love Duke. It's really welcoming and all the people here are very understanding as well as the professors. The size of the school allows you to have a very close knit relationship with all of the instructors and living on a separate freshman campus allows you to become very close with all the people in your building. The campus life is very interactive and very, there's a lot of high engagement. And for all the sports fans out there, that's another way that people unite and all of the clubs and the different organizations that cater to all of the students foster inclusivity. All 
Alrighty, thank you so much for your response. And on the flip side, Eleanor, as you go ahead and, and you're excited to graduate, um, how have you described your experience here um, in the same vein? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think my favorite part about Duke so far has just been to see the individual interests of everyone grow starting from freshman to senior year. My favorite part about Duke is that everyone has their passion and whether they pursue that through their major or minor or certificate, or they're involved with an extracurricular group on campus, or they even bring a project from high school and continue to work on it and like do mentorship that way. Everyone really has their thing that makes them come alive. And Duke has so many different clubs and organizations and relationships you can foster with professors to allow you to pursue that. And if Duke doesn't have something that you'd like to be excited about and share with your classmates and Duke community, you can found your own club or get involved with research through an independent study. So there's so many different things that you can pursue um, and Duke students are just really excited about what they do. Perfect, thank you so much again as well. And so moving over to the prior things that you were thinking as you were going to matriculate to, to Duke here, um, I wanna ask Haley, uh, what is something you wish you knew before coming to Duke? That's a really good question. Um, I think something that I wish I knew coming into Duke was just how much support I would have and from all the different places I would have support. Um, when I was going off to college, it was summer of 2020, which was just like peak pandemic back in my hometown. So I was just really worried about finding my footing and being in an all new area. But I think knowing that I'm coming to a campus where from day one, I'll have support, like first year advisory counselors, academic advisors, academic deans, um, residential advisors, et cetera. It's just really important. So you know that you can always reach out to those resources and get help sooner rather than later. Thanks, Haley. And kind of a follow-up question to that. Who's been your favorite support kind of person or individual you've met here that has really impacted you so far? Well, I would say for me personally, the directors of academic engagement have been by far my favorite avenue of support. The directors of academic engagement are this incredible team um, of staff members who all have different specialties um, who will sort of help work with you and tailor opportunities on and off campus that are unique to your specific interests. So I'll give a quick example. Um, I had an academic advisor who helped me find my American end of endometriosis work, which is at the intersection of women's health and education, which I'm really passionate about. Um, and so that just really helped me get involved quickly um, on campus, which is a really great thing. Great, thank you so much. And I wanna turn that same question over to Kelly M. What is something you wish you knew before you came to Duke? A uh, great question. Thank you. Um, I would say um, I would probably tell myself that I was going to make a lot more friends and a lot faster than I thought I would, um, especially just like living on East Campus with all freshmen. It's a lot easier than you think to kind of just like pick up conversations with people and find common interests and really just expand your friend group pretty rapidly, which was very surprising to me. Um, a couple of my closest friends I've met just like on the bus from East to West campus or um, even in my dorm are a lot of my closest friends. And even if you don't live near people, um, it's also pretty easy to meet people just because you're all on the same um, pretty close knit and small campus. So I would definitely say like, I would tell myself not to worry about um, that friend group kind of falling into place because um, Duke really like facilitates that with the community that is naturally built. Perfect. And I know that you're currently a first year student here. Can you talk a little bit about what Duke does to ensure that community really forms and stays so stable throughout your time here on campus? Yeah, I think definitely just like the physical space of East Campus where like we all live within the same pretty um, generally small confines and um, we all go to marketplace for dinner most of the time or breakfast. So like, even if you're not planning to meet up with someone, you often run into your friends um, at mealtimes and it's easy to just kind of like grab a meal with someone or um, even within our own um, dorms. I'm part of my dorms house council, which 
we put on events to help people meet each other within our own dorm. And we're also like planning a crossover event with like one of the other dorms. So there's just a lot of events and a lot of ways to create community, um, especially during orientation week as well. There are plenty of um, events where you'll, you'll meet um, fellow freshmen who, again, live in the same place as you and kind of um, walk the same walks as you and all that kind of stuff. Alrighty, thank you so much for your response. I remember I love freshman year also as well. And I wanna turn this next question over to Eleanor. So I know that you've been really involved in actually creating your own major through program two. So could you speak a little bit about that and then also highlight for us um, what's been your favorite class or faculty member since you've been so like deeply looking through all of the course catalog catalogs here? Yes, that's a great question. I'm so happy you asked me that. So I came to Duke, you know, before Duke even, I'll start there. I was trying to figure out if I want to do an undergrad business degree or if I want to do economics. And Duke is unique in that they don't have a strict undergrad business program. So came to Duke thinking I wanted to do econ as well as our sustainability certificate. And certificates are basically um, in between majors and minors, typically in terms of requirements. And then got three semesters in through the coursework and you know did a lot of the classic micro macro prereqs for the econ major, same with the math requirements. And was just feeling like, you know, especially after my gap years, I wanted to draw on some of those more unique experiences I have and have the opportunity through program two to design my own track and my own research question and be able to start that as early as sophomore year. So actually right before COVID hit um, sophomore spring, I went to my dean and basically shared with her my concerns for just staying in the traditional econ track and really, you know, why I felt that I couldn't accomplish my academic goals through traditional the program one track. And so basically the process for that is you meet with your dean and you select essentially a department that sponsors you. So mine is the economics department and you also find a major as advised for say a mentor. And so that's related to the second question of what has been my favorite class. So my major advisor is Connell Fullenkamp. He's the head of the econ department. And I had him when I was a first semester freshman in econ 101, a classic big lecture class, a little bit intimidating um, for my first econ class of college. Um, but I've been able to take some really great electives with him starting a lot earlier through program two than I would have been able to had I just stuck with the, the econ major. So some of those have been corporate finance. I'm in his risk management class right now. And then for program two, you also have the opportunity to do a essentially a two semester um, thesis project. So uh, it's called a graduation with distinction project. And I started last semester and was actually able to do an independent study with him and do research essentially on environmental, social and governance and investment banks. And I will be continuing that this semester. And then you get to present to a committee at the end, um, right before graduation. So it's a lot of face time with your major advisor. It's a lot of face time with your dean, but I really liked having that intimate relationship with them. Um, and it also really kept me on top of my you know, own academic track that I had planned for myself. Thank you so, so much. That's incredibly cool that you've been able to do that here. <clears throat> And I wanted to kind of pose that same question as well to Kelly A. I know this is your second semester here um, and you've probably enrolled and done four classes already or maybe five and then you're in this semester. Who's been your favorite professor so far and your favorite class as you started your time here at Duke? Yeah, so I took la last semester I took four classes and this semester I took another four classes and my favorite professor was my Liberation Ecologies professor for Writing 101. So all freshmen are required to take a writing class which has a bunch of different subtopics. And I took liberation ecologies, which initially didn't really interest me. It just fit my schedule. And I find myself a lot more interested in environmental policy and activism and um, global climate change and all of that. And my professor was very kind and teachers at Duke um, are very understanding when it comes to personal, physical or mental health issues. I got COVID in the first semester and he was right on top, making sure that I maintained the course load and that I didn't fall behind. So feel free to reach out to your professors while I'm on this. I do think that office hours are very important with your professors because it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation and it's not just talking about class. It's they'll give you opportunities that you didn't even know about and internships and mentorship programs, which is how I got close to that professor. Amazing. Thank you so much. 
<clears throat> and so I want to turn our next question over to Haley. Haley, so I know that you'd mentioned prior um, when we were speaking before that this upcoming year you're going to be a first year advisory counselor, which is a really big part of that incredible experience that we have during our first year on campus. I wanted to turn this question over to you about how does the housing situation work if you're doing a focus and an LLC um, just in relation to student life here on campus? Okay, so first off, starting with the FOCUS program, which is essentially a program for first years that happens in your first semester on campus. And essentially, you're put in a cohort of around 30 people um, and then distributed into four different classes that fit within the theme. The focus I was in was um, the global ethics and leadership focus, um, and each of my classes were about 15, 16 people. But focus would happen in your first semester of your freshman year, whereas LLCs are for sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So for your LLC, if there is one that you're really interested in doing on campus, you would probably start applying for that um, or getting involved with that the spring of your freshman year, so after focus would occur. So you could definitely do both. Um, I have a friend who did do both, she was in my focus, and then she went on to be a part of the Baldwin Scholars Program, which is a female identifying empowerment program. So you can definitely make both of those things happen, both focus and living learning communities. Thank you so much, Haley. Um, I wanted to also, I, it was a quick question that came into the chat about a gap year and the gap year experience, and Eleanor has actually done that. So wanted to ask about what you did and you know maybe why it was meaningful for your time here at Duke. I mean, you can share about that as well, Eleanor. Yeah, again, since it's a kind of multi-leveled question, um, we'll have a little bit of a longer answer, but um, I was born and raised in Brussels. My dad's side of the family is from Amsterdam. And so my older sister and all my dad's side of the family had done gap years. And I actually graduated high school in 2016, so it was still pretty uncommon, at least for high schools uh, within the U.S. to be doing gap years. Um, but what I decided to do is, you know, kind of take some time before college to, one, figure out what I actually wanted to study, but to just take time to have, you know, different opportunities, whether it's related to professional development or travel or volunteering or learning another skill or language that I probably might not have had, you know, a full year to do if I was at Duke. Duke has some amazing study abroad programs, but typically you go, you know, for a semester and are also doing school work during that time as well. And then, you know, I'm graduating in May and start my job in July. So for my first gap year, I lived in Chile. Um, I wanted to develop my fluency in Spanish before coming to Duke and really solidify that. So I went to school and volunteered down there at a nursing home, actually. And then I came back and for the spring semester, um, spent that in Tanzania doing work with a UK-based charity, um, basically doing grassroots like sustainability initiatives in rural, rural communities there. And you know, got to meet people from all over the world gained some exposure to Swahili. And then for the second one, I ended up doing a data science boot camp because I thought I wanted to come to college and be a data scientist and do coding. Um, and so basically did that for three months. And then the following semester, um, ended up working and interning in business analytics. And you know how that relates to Duke, I think, one, I had such a better idea of what I wanted to do. I did mention that I switched majors, but I think a large part of that was because I was still drawing on those experiences that were very meaningful in the gap years um, and wanted to continue to use that within my major and program to um, let me do that a little bit easier than just something like econ would have. Um, but then similarly, if you are considering taking a gap year, I was unique in that I, I applied to Duke after my gap years. I didn't apply and then defer, but those are both valid options. Um, you can essentially use some of your experiences on your gap years um, to count towards due credit. So, for example, the sustainability certificate has, I think it's five classes, and then you have to do a 300-hour and a 150-hour experience outside of the classroom to complement your academic work. And I was able to use, you know, the three months I'd spent in Tanzania um, to count towards that and so had a little bit more flexibility in my schedules and summers. So, you know, you're always happy to chat afterwards um, if anyone's considering doing a gap year. Thank you, Eleanor. So our next question is gonna go to Kelly M. I wanna ask you, 
I know that you're tenting right now, really cool experience. Can you talk about some traditions at Duke and just what you've noticed has made our school really, really unique and special? Yeah, perfect. So first I'll talk about like a couple of the East Campus um, traditions just because you guys are about to be freshmen here. So um, very relevant um, to you guys and like your current path. Um, so one of the things that um, the East Campus Council puts together is called Midnight Breakfast and they have it at our dining hall um, marketplace. And it is exactly what it sounds like. There's breakfast at midnight and it's just a lot of fun. It's like a great opportunity um, to meet up with all your friends. And um, it's also towards, it's in the first semester too. So you're, you're also gonna meet new people. Um, same with some orientation week traditions too. Um, like there's an East Campus Carnival traditionally. Um, and that's where I met a lot of people as well and just other events like that. And then as far as like our sporting traditions go, obviously we're a huge basketball school and um, I've been really involved in like um, waiting in line for the games and going to a lot of home games. And it's just so much fun. Like all the school spirit here is just incredible. It's one of the main reasons I wanted to come to Duke. And um, actually most of my free time right now is um, spent in a tent outside at uh, Kville, which is named after Coach K, right outside the gym, um, where we all will be tenting for the next um, five weeks to get into the UNC game. And it's a lot of fun um, meeting new people too, because we're all in really close quarters and just like um, having those bonding experiences that doesn't happen at any other school. Um, and I think our sports in general, we just, we're really supportive of our athletes and our teams. And it's just a great way to build that school spirit as well. So Duke has a lot of community and tradition that I'm really proud of. Great traditions here at Duke. I wanna turn our next question over to Kelly A. Um, so we've mentioned a lot about academics and a lot of the things that students can do here class-wise, but what do you do to fill your time outside of class? What are you involved with? And you know, what are things that you like to do with friends possibly as well? Yeah, so as I mentioned before, I'm involved in a work study at the conservation lab in the library. And they're very flexible with the schedule and it caters to your workload of that week. So if it's midterms, I can ask them to scale back on the hours so I can focus more on school and I can remake the hours the following week. Or if I can't make up the hours, they're completely understanding of that too. And it's really interesting because that wasn't really a field that particularly interests me at the beginning. And now I found that I have a greater appreciation for it. I'm also in the Latin American student organization, which I found very helpful to acclimating to this new environment. Being from Miami, I was used to being around a lot of Hispanic people, and I was really fortunate to have found a lot of other people with similar backgrounds that understand what it's like having to transition to a completely different state. And I also am currently rushing the pre-law society um, at Duke, which is really helpful. So that's the next two weeks is just a lot of interviews and conversations with people that are also interested in the pre-law field. And it's really helpful because it adds a lot of resources and a lot of networking situations where you can find out information with people that are relevant with your field. And when it comes to like my friends, I like to think of rooming with a random person as like an ultimate sleepover every single day. So I love having people in my dorm. Like my dorm right now is like the room that everyone goes to. So it's just really fun. You have people over every night, people sleep in your room, you sleep in other people's room. It's just like a slumber party every day of the week. So much fun. Um, I'll turn it over to Haley as well. What is something you do outside of class or what are the things that you do outside of class um, that keep you busy and, and ensure that you're having a really fun time here on campus as well? So outside of class um, and also outside of extracurriculars, which I'll touch on a little bit later, I think one of my favorite things to do in Durham um, is take advantage of the food scene. Um, you may know or you may not know um, that Durham's a really big foodie town. So there are so many different restaurants in and around campus that you can try out. So I love going out to dinner or brunch um, with friends. And that's just a really good way to get involved in the Durham community, see a little bit of the Durham community um, and meet people in sort of like those casual talking settings. Um, outside of like that, I'm super involved in volunteer work in and around Durham. One of the things I do is the Girls Club, which is a mentorship program with um, junior high school FEMA identifying students from Durham Public Schools. 
So that's just another way I like to get involved with the community um, and really sort of like plant some roots in Durham um, while also giving back and mingling with my peers. Um, so that's a lot of fun as well. I will say I find it really common that Duke students, as much as they're involved in things on campus, they have involvements back from their hometowns, from different communities, national level involvements, which is really cool as well. Um, I have a friend who does work for a think tank that's centered in Montana, okay? But um, so she's super involved with that outside of her classes, but that just goes to show that your involvement on campus can really extend as broad as you'd like it to and that you'll definitely have time to pursue those passions in addition to your classroom. Thank you so much, Haley. I wanna kind of pick apart something that you had mentioned as well about things to do in Durham. I wanna ask our other panelists as well. I know that the experiences here on campus at Duke are really cool, but what are some other things you've been able to do um, off campus, whether that be you know, going to stores or restaurants or just things to do in general? Uh, let's start with Kelly M. What are some things that you've gotten a chance to do um, off campus? Yeah, so my focus program actually took a little field trip to the um, Durham Bulls baseball park and we went to a baseball game and it was a lot of fun. And it's actually a pretty short walk from East Campus that it's pretty easy to just kind of walk downtown. Um, I've also gone out to like a couple dinners with my friends. Um, like Haley mentioned, the food scene is amazing. And again, it's pretty easy to just like walk or Uber right into downtown and you have access to some great restaurants. Um, and also like ice cream and all that good stuff. Thank you, Kelly M. And Eleanor, what are some things you've got a chance to do here? Yeah, just because the weather is so good, pretty much I'd say like 10 or so, nine to 10 months out of the year, um, just really like walking around and spending time outside. I know the Duke Gardens are technically part of campus, but it brings a lot of not just Duke people um, to our campus, which is beautiful. And there's all these different um, vibes within the gardens in terms of like how they're structured and organized. Um, and then this year I live kind of on Main Street, so closer to downtown, and I can see the DPAC, which is the Durham Performing Arts Center um, from my window. And so they have shows coming into town all the time. It was a little more limited the last year and a half because of COVID, um, but like rent just closed last night. And so there's a huge, I'd say like art scene to take advantage of in addition to all the amazing food. Thank you so much. And Kelly A., what are some things that you've done in Durham? And then a follow-up question when you're finished with that, um, I'll ask you again as well. Yeah, so I'm really big on self-care and I found like the little spa that's about four blocks away from East Campus. So I like to go at least once a month and like get a facial or do my eyebrows. And I think it's like really helping me like mentally to like stay relaxed and stuff. And I also found that a lot of my time, there's like a local tutoring center, which I go to volunteer sometimes, which is something I did back at home. And I like being around kids. So that also helps, you know, alleviate stress. Perfect. And follow-up question for you as well. I know you had mentioned earlier how fun it is to live in a dorm as a first-year student. Um, do you have any advice for people who've never lived with a roommate? And is it worth having one versus your own room? Yeah, so I'm an only child. This is the first time I've had to share my living space. So I was very nervous at the beginning of the year when I got the email saying that I was partnered up with someone I had never spoken to. My biggest recommendation is to reach out to them in the summer. If they don't reach out to you, just send an email, say, hey, can I get your snap or your number? I'd like to talk about like who I am. And with that, you'll learn about like kind of how they are. And at the beginning of the year, when you first move in, maybe talk about the appliances that you may be sharing so you don't end up with two microwaves and two refrigerators, just one in one. And with that, also talk about, you know, their behaviors and things that you are not okay with. Set up boundaries. You don't have to, you know, live through stuff that you don't want to. If you want your side of the room to stay untouched, just make sure you let them know and respect their boundaries as well. Uh, so when you first apply to have a roommate, they ask you a set of questions like, what time do you wake up? What time do you go to sleep? So if you don't, don't lie on that, because just to look cool, if you go to sleep at 10 p.m., no one's going to judge you. You just won't get partnered up with someone that's playing music till 12 a.m. You know, around midterms and stuff, set that boundary that you want quiet time until 8 p.m. So, you know, all of those things, it's something that you just have to communicate. Don't be nervous about getting a roommate. My roommate is like my best friend right now. I love her. So, yeah. And if things don't work out, I mean, reassignment is always an option. You don't have to be stuck in an uncomfortable situation. 
Thank you so much, Kelly, for sharing. So we're gonna move into one of our last questions for the panelists here tonight before we move into our general admissions. So Haley, um, could you kick us off by talking about what is the most underrated thing at Duke in your opinion and your experience that you've had here so far? Okay, um, I think the most underrated thing on Duke's campus, okay. I think the most underrated thing on Duke's campus is probably Durham, which is like a workaround question, but there's so many opportunities that are like stemmed at Duke that sort of flourish into the community um, that I feel like people don't always take the most advantage of. So I would say definitely, definitely get involved. And then I'd also say professors and office hours, which every single professor you have is going to say professors and office hours once you get to campus. So go talk to your professors. They're so excited to meet you. Every professor I've ever had is like my favorite professor that I've ever had. So they are helpful with recommendations, just getting you acclimated to campus. They'll pull you into your research or their research and help you get involved. So I'd say professors, office hours in Durham. Thank you so much. And Kelly A, most underrated thing at Duke you've experienced so far? I would say the career advisors. I didn't really think I would have to talk to someone about what I wanted to do because when I came in, I was like, I want to do pub Paul. But even in that, after the first couple of weeks at Duke, I was really stressed out and I started second guessing everything that I wanted, that I want to do mock trials, that I want to do pre-law society and all of those things. So talking to a career advisor, they gave me advice. They don't tell you what to do. They just give you recommendations and suggestions based on what you tell them. And if you end up transitioning to a different field, they do have all the resources to help guide you in that sense as well. Thank you. And Kelly M, most underrated thing you've experienced here? I would probably say um, either visiting the Nasher Art Museum or um, flunching your professors. I know that Duke likes to advertise flunching a lot and maybe it's not underrated in terms of like their advertising, but I think I don't know that many people who like actually flunched their professor and I think it's actually a great opportunity to kind of get to know them better. Um, and also just with the Nasher, like I went there for an assignment for one of my classes and it was just um, a really great experience to, like it was just like relaxing to reflect on everything there. And um, what Flunch is, is taking your professor out to lunch um, and you can, and Duke um, pays for that. It's like um, a fund for you to take your professor out to lunch and you can either do it alone or you can bring friends with you. And um, I did it with one of my focus professors and it was great just to get to know her in a more casual setting. And I also enjoyed the class even more after that. All righty, and Eleanor, if you could round us out with your experience here at Duke. Yes, such a good question. I was going to say Flunch, but my second one is the Divinity School Library. So this is a well-kept secret that I've had for the last four years, so nobody said anything, but it's this little underground library um, attached to Perkins, which is our main library. And it's um, basically an all silent space. It's not particularly pretty, but it's a lot of um, quieter grad students within the Divinity School. Um, there is a library bunny named Hildegard who sometimes make an appearance and just hops around, um, kind of like a therapy bunny they have. They often have, sna have snacks available and it's just a really quiet space. I think there's some parts of campus like first floor of Perkins or Vondi, which is one of our library um, coffee shops on campus that are much more social. But if you need during midterms or finals to just go to a quiet place, but still be around, you know, individuals also studying, it's the best place ever. Thank you again so much, so much for sharing that. And so now we're gonna transition our time here together today to highlighting some other general, general questions. Um, that our audience and Vimeo have asked us today. And so I want to go ahead and begin um, by answering a quick question, actually personally, about research opportunities on campus. I conduct research here as a, a student here um, in regards to biology. And so there are quite a few things for students to get involved with here on campus. So what that looks like is that even during your first year on campus, you can utilize something called Muser, which is an application service that allows you to be able to apply to a number of different positions at one time. It's really, really cool in the sense that it really 
provides an opportunity for students to just go ahead and apply and throw a wide net out into the research opportunities that exist. I, there are far more research positions to be filled than students. So it's not as much of a competition as what people may initially perceive. Um, have any of our other panelists here conducted research um, individually? I know, I think Eleanor has and Haley has, right? Yeah, Haley, um, you wanna highlight that? Sure, so my research experience at Duke actually started before I ever set foot on campus. So there's a program at Duke called Bass Connections. And Bass Connections is where you have undergraduate students, both under and upperclassmen working with grad students, professors and researchers nationwide to conduct projects and tackle real world problems. So my Bass Connections project was elections and a pandemic that took place in fall 2020 and spring 2021. So I filled out like a quick interest form. Um, I think it was June um, after I committed to Duke. And then I got an email back from the professor. We had a Zoom call. And the next thing I knew I was on the team. So I was actually able to do research on misinformation and information studies throughout the election and talk with sort of leaders in the field from both Duke, but other institutions and then present that research um, at a symposium at the end of my freshman year. So right off the bat, you are able to jump in and those opportunities are open to you as a freshman if you wish to take advantage of them, which I definitely think everyone should. Thank you so much, Haley. And again, to our audience here today, please be sure to ask questions in the Vimeo. Um, there should be like a chat towards the bottom there. And so I want to have an opportunity to highlight those questions um, for all of our students here, because that's what we're here to do today as well. And so we'll let those populate for a moment. But while we're looking for those questions from all of you all today, why don't we talk about favorite memories and our favorite experiences or places on campus? So really quickly in a roundtable format, um, Eleanor, you want to kick off your favorite memory or a place here on campus? Sure, I will start with hmm, favorite place on campus. It really depends what kind of mood you're in in terms of being in, seeing people or being in more of a quiet mood. Um, but the Wellness Center is really nice. There's a piano that you can go and play there. They have like a little Zen garden and floating chairs that you can sit on. They have massage chairs. Um, it's basically like a great place to just decompress um, and prioritize your mental health. And then favorite memory, I think this isn't something specific to campus, but I think the first, like two years ago when we all get sent home for COVID, it was really nice to see Duke administration, but also peers and friends I maybe didn't even know as well, kind of continue to try to foster this new reality of like, what is Duke going to look like virtually? And just seeing the students do various initiatives, especially surrounding mental health, just to continue to be there for each other, despite the fact we all weren't returning to Durham, was something that I was just like a moment that I felt really proud to be of the community. Thank you. Um, Kelly A, favorite memory here at Duke? Uh, I have like two favorite memories. Like my first one was O Week, which was a lot of fun. Duke had a lot of activities on East Campus. We had like bouncy houses and mechanical bowls. There was confetti and we all got matching shirts for the 2025 picture. So that was a lot of fun. And that's where I met the majority of my friends right now. And then there's also um, during the first midterm session, which was funny because I had never experienced like everyone like st like stressing out and studying at the same time. And like you see people studying like on all the benches and all the libraries and all the study rooms are getting taken up. So that was like kind of comforting knowing that everyone was going through the same thing. And it wasn't like I was the only one that was stressed out. People were comforting each other and we were all bonding and taking like breaks and relaxing at the same time. So that was kind of fun too, in its own way. And Kelly M, favorite memory or place on campus? Um, I think my favorite memory is like anytime I go to the basketball games, cause it's just so much fun. Like everyone knows all the chants and like, it's just a great community and it's just like so much good energy. Um, and then favorite place, there is this one room in the library, I think it's Bostock and it's just like all glass walls and it's like a view of the chapel and it's like a quiet study room. So it's like very relaxing and just like, I'm very productive there. And I think that that's one of my favorite places um, if I'm looking for a good spot to do homework. 
Thank you. And Haley, round us out with a favorite place on campus. So my favorite um, place on campus or my favorite memory of campus? Either. Okay. okay. Well, it's, it's kind of both together. Uh, so my favorite place and favorite memory of campus um, is sort of the BC Plaza. So the LDOC or the last day of class um, my freshman year, it was actually the day before the last day of class, um, just because I didn't have class on the last day of class. Um, a bunch of us got together and we moved a bunch of the tables like together um, on the Bryant Center Plaza, which is right outside on um, the dining hall on West Campus. And we sort of had like an all day picnic and I met so many people that day. And it just really shows that the culture of Duke is really conducive to people just excited to talk about what they're passionate about and really open and willing to hear from other people. So that was one of my favorite memories at one of my favorite places on Duke's campus. Great, thank you, Haley. And so now we're gonna take, a, take the time to highlight many of the questions you all have had an opportunity to ask. We've gotten a bunch of them here now. The first question from the audience that we wanna pose, we're gonna have Kelly M talk about what was the hardest part about adjusting to Duke um, as a first year student? Yeah, so I think one of the main things I struggled with was just that there is like so much to do here. Like, especially the first couple weeks, you're kind of realizing that there's so many events to choose from, um, so many different like social circles to kind of like flesh out and see like kind of who's gonna click with you. But I think the important thing to keep in mind is that like, it's okay to say no to things. Like it's okay to take a break for yourself when you need it. Um, and that there's always gonna be another opportunity to make up for maybe something you missed. Um, you're never really missing out here because like there's always something more to do. So it is okay to like say no to things, like I said, and I think that's important to keep in mind. And also that like those people that are gonna end up being your closest friends, they're, they're gonna be like welcoming whether or not you decide to hang out with them every single time. So that's something that I would keep in mind is just try not to get too overwhelmed with everything there is to offer. All righty, and I wanted to pose kind of a two-prong question for Kelly A now. I know you were planning on double majoring, so can you talk about what that's like with time management? Um, and then kind of following that, highlighting some information about what, what it's like to have a car on campus as well. Yeah, so I was planning on double majoring in public policy and sociology, but last semester it was public policy and global health. So the first thing that I did was take a pub pol class and take a global health class to see if that's what I really wanted. And in doing that, I realized that global health wasn't really for me. But right now I'm doing pub pol and sociology classes and I realized that that's a mix that I do like. Um, I would recommend talking to your academic advisor and letting them know that that's something you're interested in because they can kind of lay out the course load and let you know if there's any classes that kind of double dip between your majors, which will make it easier to complete on time. And then there's also, you could take summer classes if you wanna to try to get ahead of things. But even if the two majors don't interrelate, there's still always a way to try to kind of fit it into your schedule and take the right classes. But planning it out with your academic advisor is the first step that you have to do because they know how to make it work. And then in regards to having a car on campus, I left my car at home in Miami, but I am planning on taking it here next year. Uh, I chose not to bring it this year because I thought that I really wanted to kind of assimilate to the campus life before I start driving off campus or far enough where I can't Uber. Uh, but my roommate has a car and she only lives like an hour away. So she does go home a lot. So I think that if that's something that you're interested in, then it would be cool to have a car. I'm taking my car up here next year because I want to drive to like Charlotte and, and Raleigh and Asheville and all of that. And I would want to see stuff beyond campus life. So don't worry if you're not bringing a car this year. The buses can take you pretty much anywhere on campus. And a lot of things are walking distance or, you know, a really cheap $10 Uber if you want to like go to the mall or something. Um, and yeah, the parking pass is about, I think it's like 400 for the entire year. And they have different locations that you can pay for depending on where you're living on campus or off campus. So you don't have to worry about that being a problem. Great, thank you so much. And Eleanor, uh, how did you get a chance to meet many of the friends you have today? Um, and how did you meet your social circle here? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I think my group has changed a little bit freshman to senior year just in the nature of being involved with different things. 
So freshman year, a core community that kind of came instantly that I think Kelly might have mentioned was through the FOCUS program. So the living and learning community um, that you're with for the first semester and then continue to live with for the whole um, two semesters. And then just being involved in kind of a variety of things. I know there's a diversity of Duke students and some kind of find their one or two activities and really love them hard. Um, versus I spent kind of the different years trying to be involved with one new thing each year and not necessarily just having them add up. But if I needed to um, drop something that I didn't have time for, was a little bit less in, um, interested in. Um, one of the core communities is through one of my selective living groups, um, which has been a great community. And then also international orientation, as well as just orientation week in general, um, was a great place to meet a lot of people. And so just, yeah, I would say extracurriculars and classes. And then even, you know, there's some professors who you just develop really good um, mentorship type relationships with. And they, you know, almost serve, I wouldn't say friends, but as, as individuals, you can really talk and open up to about everything from professional development to school um, to family life and everything. Um, so just, you know, being excited to, to meet people and um, looking at everything as an opportunity to just you know, grow your community. Thank you. And for Haley, uh, how do you, or what kind of advice could you offer to individuals um, who are interested about how you balance both school and extracurricular involvement here too? I think the best advice I was given for balancing school and extracurricular involvement, involvement is just sort of like putting like yourself first and like just taking time to set out your priorities ahead of time. Something you'll notice about campus is that people are involved in a wide variety of things to a varying degree, um, which Eleanor kind of touched on in her last answer. It is definitely possible to just be a part of the general body of some clubs because you're interested in it, but maybe you don't have as much time to put towards it and then be on the executive board or a very involved member in others. So I think it's just about sort of following your interests um, and letting that sort of dictate where your time goes. And also, like I mentioned way towards the beginning, just being able to ask for help when you need it. Professors are definitely willing and able to like help you do things. We have the Academic Resource Center in which they will have someone sit down with you and help you organize a schedule. Um, and those are all great resources to help you sort of like attack those passions to the degree that you want to at any given time for you. Here's at Duke. Thank you, Kelly. I mean, I'm the, thank you, Haley. <laughs> and our next question for Kelly M. So an individual had asked that, you know, they hear a lot about students often being caught in the Duke bubble in regards to socialization, considering where Duke is. Do you think getting, um, do you think getting it too absorbed in Duke is an easy trap? And if so, any advice for not falling into it? Yeah, so I think one of the best ways to kind of avoid that is just like get into Durham when you can. And especially from East Campus, um, it's right near a, a nice little like strip of shops and restaurants um, that is known as Ninth Street. And um, I think about once a week, um, me and my roommate often just like walk down Ninth Street and stop at one of like the local shops there or go to the grocery. And it just kind of gets you off campus and it, you know, reminds you that you're not in a bubble, like you are a part of the Durham community as well. And as Haley mentioned, like community service within Durham, there are plenty of like crossover opportunities between Duke and Durham that I think Duke is um, working to facilitate more and more. So I think just like maybe making it a plan to kind of like walk off campus like once a week or, you know, just looking into those community service opportunities or you know, saying you're going to go downtown to grab dinner with your friends on a Saturday night or something like that. Um, and I think that those are some of the core ways that you can kind of like avoid easily forgetting that you're like in the real world still. Thank you so much, Kelly M. And towards our last question for the evening, which highlights a little bit about that socialization here at Duke and the experiences of students. I want to ask a last question over to Kelly A. Um, could you talk to us a little bit about Quad X, its new kind of piloting year this year, um, and what you can expect next year as a first year student? 
Yeah, so ThoughtX was recently introduced to Duke. So class 25 and class 26 will be the first classes to be doing this, kind of like the guinea pigs. So you may have heard the analogy of having it be like Hogwarts where you're sorted into houses and it's basically like that. So when you arrive to East Campus, you'll be all in your own separate houses. So I'm in West House and Duke is matching up our neighborhoods, which is just like two or three houses on East Campus or a neighborhood and then those two or three houses move into a one quad on West Campus. So you will be living with the same people freshman to junior year. Um, and if that like that reinforces the whole notion of getting to actually know the people that you live with. And once you move to West Campus for your sophomore year, you get to pick who you block with on your floor, which is just who else is going to be living within like the same couple of rooms. So this is kind of meant to reinforce the whole idea of inclusivity and getting to know the people that you live with. Even if you choose to live off campus after your third year at Duke, you still associate with your quad. So that's all the activities that are related to our housing. We will all be together all the way long. And it's just a really fun thing. Well, I'm really excited to do it. I already planned out who I'm walking with on the other side of the neighborhood. And it's just some, it's, it's fun, it's cool, it's new. I think everyone's gonna love it. Alrighty, thank you so much, Kelly A. And with that being our last question for the evening, we would really love to thank our panelists for taking the time out of their evening to come and speak to us and to all of you about the experiences they've had here at Duke. So wonderful round of applause for them from home and thank them so much for that. And then also we'd love to thank everyone who joined us today. And again, a special congratulations to all of our Duke 2026 New Blue Devils. We are so excited to have you here next year. And if you see us around, please say hello. Um, and another thing as well, so we have a lot of programming going on in these next couple of weeks to get students ready and excited for their experience um, as they begin to matriculate next fall. So be sure to encourage, we love to encourage students to visit at Duke students on Instagram, um, hit us up on Twitter, see some YouTube videos, those experiences for students. You can find many different opportunities where people have done takeovers to hear about their lives that they have here on campus, Facebook, all of that kind of stuff. Everywhere where you can have an opportunity to hear about Duke, please learn about it and get excited to be here. And you can also go to your student portal to see more upcoming um, early decision Blue Double Days programming for all of our students here. So with that being said, have the most amazing evening or morning or night or wherever you are in the world. And we are again, so excited to welcome you all here today. Okay, thank you all so much. Bye everyone.